We're going to continue our discussion on Lecture 1, Biology and Learning, by now talking about the next concept and the next flowchart, which will be entitled Goals of Workshop. When you take General Biology at Rutgers, you both, you're going to take both the course, which is the lecture that happens twice a week, and you're also going to be a part of Biology Workshop, which is usually led by a TA. The goals of workshop are all based off of neuroscience and cognitive psychology, the things that we talked about in our first video on the brain. And they're, they're, it's there, the workshop itself, to improve your ability to form memories. That's first and foremost about workshop. It improves, or hopes to improve, uh, ability to form memories. And remember, we talked about that idea of short-term and long-term memory and retrieving it and then storing it. Biology and learning, and specifically the goals of our workshop uh, that's going to, that you're going to be a part of, its whole idea is to improve the ability to form memories. So, what's the point of this? The whole idea behind workshop is to allow you to use memories, and we'll write this down, use memories, to learn and problem solve. And we'll just write prob solve. Uh, the quote that I always think of when I hear this, to use memories to learn and problem solve, is this idea of what good is knowledge without application? Knowledge without application is useless, and the Rutgers Biology Department knows this. And so what they're going to do is, especially at the workshop, is to help you, or ideally help you, so is it my goal as well, to uh, encourage this process. And we call this, this idea of short-term memory to long-term memory, we touched upon in our last video. The technical psychological term for this is called encoding. If you are able to encode effectively and efficiently and then also retrieve effectively and efficiently, you'll do well in this course. You'll do well in life, honestly, if this is possible, if this is done well. This is what allows for what is known as sustained memory. Sustained memory are things that you always remember, things that are ingrained within your mind. And this ingrainment is also known as in psychology as long-term potentiation, which from this point forward we'll just call LTP. L T. Long-term potentiation is this idea of taking a short-term memory, encoding it into long-term memory so that it stays there and is easily retrievable so that you can learn and problem solve. This is what biology is all about. This is what workshop is going to try to help you promote. So let's talk about LTP a little bit more, long-term potentiation. LTP, just like the brain, because it's a part of the brain, this is this idea once more, it's activity dependent. What do I mean by this? When you create memories, when you want to form a memory, you have to make sure that the memory obviously is forming well. So there's this idea of formation of memories being involved with the activities of long-term potentiation. There's also storage. You want to make sure that it stays there when you need it. And then there's also obviously the idea of learning. These three things, learning, storage, and formation, are what make up long-term potentiation. These are three factors. And long-term potentiation, from a, let's say, more of a physiological perspective, is not just this idea of forming, storing, and learning. It's really, essentially, you're increasing, remember this represents increase in arrow upwards, increases um, synapse strengths. What do I mean by this? Remember the synapse is just the connection between two neurons? When you have many of these connections, you have this ability to learn. You are developing the brain. But if you increase those connection strengths, let's imagine that there are two things that are connected. But if you connect them, let's say, with an even stronger material to make sure that they stay together, when you long-term potentiate, you are actively learning. And we can write this down as the learner because of this idea of long-term potentiation, is active. Previously, this is a little bit of history for you, many people thought that 
the brain was a blank slate and it was there to just absorb and absorb and absorb information as opposed to constructing information. Now we know that the learner is active. The learner is going to always be trying to figure out what to keep in terms of important information. So it keeps important info, learner. And then if it doesn't see something as important, it will, necess it will probably discard it, discard the rest. And so this idea of active learning is seen and hopefully initialized and sort of done at workshop. You're going to be doing activities that help promote your active learning brain. And lastly, what we want to just talk about is this idea of LTP, long-term potentiation memory formation. So workshop will also try to help you form those memories. Remember, it improves the ability to form memories. What specifically does it improve? Hopefully it will improve, improve your long-term potentiation memory formation. So how does it do that? Well, what we know is from psychology that when you have things that are associated or meaning associations, uh, and I'll explain that in just a second, they actually aid in what is known as memory formation, mem formation, we'll say. What does that mean? What does meaning associations mean? This essentially is referring to prior knowledge. If you come in and take Rutgers Biology after taking an AP Biology course, your associations that you already have are pretty strong. Your prior knowledge is pretty strong. Thus, your memory formation when you take this course and try to learn biology right here is going to be pretty good. Another example you can think of is a, a card game. Let's uh, write card game example. If you know how to play one card game, that allows you the ability to play another. If you know how to work the cards in terms of poker and you know what ha certain hands mean, you're going to be able to play other card games just as well or better than somebody who has no idea, who doesn't have those associations to begin with. And then another thing Workshop will try to do is this idea of chunking. It's a fun word to say, chunking. Um, this is going to be learning sets of related information together. So learning sets of related info together. That's what chunking is. You have done this intuitively. You have done this subconsciously for a long time. You do this when you try to remember lots of information, but you try to put it into an easier format so that you can remember most of it. And so this, both of these things, the meaning associations, your prior knowledge, and chunking, these are obviously all going to help form and retrieve, hopefully, if you are successful, memory information. And once again, why would that be necessary? Because you want to learn. More importantly than learning, you want to do well on that exam, right? So you want to make sure that you form and retrieve this memory information. All this stuff that you're going to be learning, including the stuff that we're presenting right now, hopefully it's formed and retrieved efficiently. It's encoded and retrieved efficiently, just like we said earlier, so that you can learn and so that you can do well on the exam.